one thing that's happening um, is the onset of augmented and mixed reality. Uh, you know, the game industry and the entertainment industry, uh, you see this huge influx of um, head-mounted displays and wearable technology and stimulus back to the user to be able to let them feel like they're completely immersed in their game scenario or in an entertainment scenario. Uh, that, those technologies are coming into our market space. Uh, we're actually embracing those as an industry. Uh, not just at Rockwell Collins, but even our competitors are embracing that technology. Um, and we're finding ways to be able to innovate that technology so that it actually meets the training need. Uh, typically off-the-shelf solutions, while they might be able to fulfill a portion of your training need, uh, sometimes you have to innovate some additional technology onto those platforms to be able to uh, provide the, the meaningful training feedback that's required for those students to be able to be immersed as they would be in the real world. In the military, it's more about having that augmented approach as well, and we're working on augmented reality, which is, of course, taking that virtual component and then having actual touch displays and, and interfacing with some hardware uh, so that you can augment not only the virtual world, uh, but some of the hands-on uh, hardware as well. But thinking forward on how you can better train uh, really a new set of young men and women that are now a part of our militaries. They've now grown up totally in a digital world uh, and they're so used to this training that the question becomes how much can we augment the live training with a simulated or virtual training and again reducing the cost and the the necessary capabilities a military has. So this idea of immersing yourself in a virtual environment and being able to train in a way that you haven't previously is, uh, is really 21st century training technology. We're doing a lot of work right now, a lot of developmental work in augmented reality. And so when you think about blending together the best of breed of virtual training with live training and do that in a way that's very representative of the kind of environments that folks will have to train to for military missions for the future and do it in a cost-effective way, again, that's, a, that's kind of a very good value proposition. So we're doing a lot of work in, that, uh, in those areas.